Welcome everyone. Let's talk about proof of stake right now. Let's talk about investment strategies moving forward into the future. Things have changed in the economy. The economy is collapsing and I know that COVID-19 has been a catalyst for this economic collapse, but the truth is that the economy has been collapsing for a decade plus, maybe decades. This debt-based cycle that we're on was unsustainable and it was going to be either COVID-19 or some other major world event that was going to shift us into this new paradigm or this new world that we live in. And this world is going to be a very different one than what we have before. It is the end of April when I'm shooting this video. Lockdowns are probably going to start easing up over the next few weeks and the U.S. should start opening up various different parts of the economy again, but things are never going to be the same. And I'm speaking personally, and I'm also speaking probably from the perspective of multiple other people who inhabit the same places that I do. The state of the matter, the, the fact of the matter is that when the government says no more lockdown or no more stay at home policies, people are still scared to go outside. People are still scared to shop. People are still scared to be close to each other. Everyone is wearing a surgical mask or some, some kind of N95 mask. When you go to the grocery store, when you go to Walmart, it's almost like people are scared to even see each other. I mean, you, the cashier pretty much hands you the receipt with the tip of her fingernail. And it seems that even when you're checking out, everyone's encouraging you to use credit cards or use your mobile phone or now they're sending Visa and MasterCard, they have the NFC chips built into the card so you can just tap your card similar to tapping your phone. And I anticipate that this is going to be the roadmap for society moving forward. Things are going to be more and more contactless and things are going to have to have some level of sanitization before actually doing that particular activity. If you decide to go on a cruise, who knows? They may test you for COVID-19 right before you get on the ship. And if you test positive, you can't go on your cruise. Um, my work sometimes re requires me to travel to different states or one state, in intra between two different states, but uh, the state I live in and then the other state. But you know, I'm not going to jump on a plane anytime soon. I really don't want to... I don't know if I'm asymptomatic. I don't know if I've had COVID before. Um, I had some sort of flu-like symptoms in January, but who knows what it was. Until we get a test, I have no idea. Either way, I don't want to get the flu. I don't want to get COVID. I don't want to get sick. So I am cautious with how I walk around. I mean, even though I'm a young and the younger demographic, it's still, you don't know how your body's immune system is going to react. So it's better, it's better to err on the side of caution. So when we're moving forward into this new ecosystem, this new, this new way of living, things are a lot different in the economy. Everything is going to become more and more automated. I recently did a store pickup order where they had curbside pickup at Kohl's and you don't even get out of your car. You just open your trunk and they throw it in the trunk or you open the side door, they throw it in the side door and that's gone. you're gone. At Walmart, one of the Walmarts close to me has this robotic device, so if you do a store pickup at Walmart, it's within this, it's, it's like within this machine, and you just scan your QR code, and then the robotic arm goes and takes your order, and then delivers it to you, and you, the glass lifts up, and you just take it off the tray. I think this is the direction we're moving. Um, I think that a lot of automation is going to start replacing jobs, because all those touch points that people are worried about, that dissipates if you have automated systems that are taking care of it. So this is in the restaurant chain. You may have robotic chefs in the future. Just so they remo remove that human element and prevent you from contaminating any sort of food or utensil or condiment. And it ultimately will help to ease people's fears and allow them to shop in shop with no inhibitions or shop with no fear of getting sick. So I think this is the direction we're moving. So using that logic that the economy is gonna be more and more automated, what do we do moving forward? And I think this video is tailored towards maybe the younger audience who is just maybe getting out of college or 
maybe entering college and wondering what they're going to do in the workforce or if how they're going to invest, how they're going to manage their careers with these changing times. Because unless you're a doctor, lawyer, or engineer, one of those traditional jobs that you get after you finish college, you go to med school, or you go to law school, and then you, you start your career. If you are just an investor, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are a business owner, this is probably for you. Things are going to change. Things are going to change. The way to make money, I think, in the future is using technology, is using a computer. If you're not using your computing power, or if you're not using technology to your advantage, if you're not using automation to your advantage, you're going to be left behind. And there are going to be lots of different opportunities to invest, and there are going to be lots of different opportunities to create sort of passive income streams utilizing technology, because technology never sleeps. And if you are on the right end of the curve, you can start making money, creating returns, creating revenue streams. And this is what makes proof of stake so appealing. The idea that your investment can start working for you. And I know that there's an argument to be made for proof of work, but proof of work is more, we're gonna hope that this thing blows up eventually and then I'm gonna remove a chunk of money. But the most sustainable way of investing is having those yearly returns or those monthly returns or those daily returns that provide some sort of stability. So you can create your budget, you can create your expense log, and you can figure out how much you need to live the life you wanna live and move forward. So proof of stake, I think, is the way to go. And this is probably why I love Cardano. There are other proof of stake protocols that are also going to be providing these kind of returns and this kind of liquid investment, liquid investment. So yeah, that's, that's, those are my thoughts. This is kind of a rambling video. I also wanted to talk about something unrelated. I, I wanted to talk about this before, but there are a lot of tenants right now, or there are a lot of commercial real estate properties that are going under. Commercial tenants are not paying the bills. Earlier in April, I think it was announced that the Cheesecake Factory was not paying the monthly rent for April for their real estate buildings. So all the Cheesecake Factory locations. And I thought this was asinine because the Cheesecake Factory can just do and say whatever they want. And this is the debt-based economy we live in. They are a large enterprise and they say they're not paying rent. They're not paying rent. So someone has to eat that. And it's probably the commercial building owner that eats that. And it's terrible because first of all, who's gonna kick the Cheesecake Factory out of the mall? Second of all, the Cheesecake Factory has defaced every single building that they're in. Have you ever been to a Cheesecake Factory? They, they, they spend so much money on creating these ridiculous structures. Well, I mean, it suits their restaurant, but now it doesn't. If they're, if they're not paying, it doesn't suit their restaurant. Who's going to move into that building? It looks like a gigantic restaurant that says Cheesecake Factory all over the place. It has these structures that are built on the side to resemble the logos of the Cheesecake Factory. It's not like you can flip that and then put another business in there overnight. You probably have to demolish some of the structures in the building and then reformat it for the next business. And a lot of these brick and mortar businesses have done this. Just completely deface the building and it's really hard for anyone to move inside the building. Toys R Us is another complete example. The way they just put their logo everywhere and obfuscated the, the, the tiles and, and colored things, it's very hard for another business to move in there. So yeah, this was a rant. I, I don't know what I'm talking about right now, but this is the debt-based economy we live in. This, this economy that, you know, it's, people are just consistently in debt. Cheesecake Factory was, it's, it, the economy has been closed for a few weeks and then Cheesecake Factory can't even pay their bills. Which is, which is atrocious, atrocious, atrocious. I think that they probably should have been evicted or done something because the average person would have gotten evicted or gotten some sort of notice that they're not paying their rent. Repercussions need to happen, but the repercussions only seem to happen for a small select portion of the retail class. If you have a medium or large enterprise, it doesn't happen for you. So let me know what you think. This was a ramble. I apologize for this, but the basic premise is that the internet, computers, leveraging your computing technology, leveraging the, the knowledge that you have of the internet is the way to go for investment in the future. Not necessarily saying that there's going to be one project that rules them all, 
but this is the way to do it. All right, until the next video. Bye, everyone.